What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today I'm going to make a custom album cover. Dreadlabs. So I wanted to try something new on the YouTube channel today. So I challenged myself to come up with a couple of songs um, and I wanted to make a full video of me uh, designing an album cover for them. Some will be existing songs and some will be songs that I produce myself or songs that won't even exist. Just to show you a bit of my work process basically. So well, yeah, let's just start it. So today I wanted to start out with a boot like I did for uh, Goosebumps by Travis Scott. Uh, I made this remix like, I don't know, four, three or four years ago maybe. Um, and it's based on Nightmares remix. Um, so I'll put a link up in the description once this song is actually released. Um, it's not even like properly mixed down or anything, but um, I just wanted to make a cover for it and see where we can go from here. So um, yeah, I'll try to talk you through the process, but most of the time it will be me just being quiet basically um, anyway uh, so what I wanted to do was um, so I always try to do uh, some a little bit of uh, research or um, trying to get some inspiration uh, so let's just do that right now so I th thought it would be kind of cool to get like a close-up from someone's skin uh, as like uh, the base or like the main image a bit like this texture basically I guess this could be kind of cool Let's just see if we can find something on Pinterest as well. Alright, so we get the original uh, cover. Um, I thought there might be some alternative album covers on here. Ooh, this could be cool as well. Like a, like an airbrush version or something. We could try to do a horror typing uh, as well. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to try that. Uh, okay, so I'll see you back in Procreate. I will do quick times of my, uh, of my type. Alright, so quick change of plans. I wanted to do a custom typeface and I uh, wanted to draw it out on my iPad, but my iPad's still charging uh, and my Apple Pencil is also needs to be charged, so I'm just going to do a uh, grid for now and I'll do the, the typing once uh, my iPad is on charging. Uh, anyway, so I want to cut out the model immediately so we have that transparent and we can use it for in whatever way we want. So I'm going to go to select, select a mask and most of the time if you click select subject it already gets masked up pretty well and so I'm going to use my refine edge tool to make sure that the hair will be selected properly as well All right. So yeah, as you can see, uh, Photoshop does a pretty good job at um, cutting stuff out. <coughs> um, so I think what could be cool is if we would have like almost post-apocalyptic, um, like a mountain up ahead, like as if he's like has traveled all his way and. Um, I don't know, like, 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 if, like, if he's been through a lot, like through a journey, journey, and through adventure and whatever, and he's like coming at the final spot or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go and see if I can grab some pictures. All right, so I downloaded some pictures, and let's see if we can try to manipulate these into something. So now I'm trying to cut uh, out like the front of the picture with my pen tool and that's just because it's really precise and I can just decide what's on the picture and what's not and most of the time with these landscape pictures Photoshop does in my opinion not do a really well job in uh, cutting it out automatically so yeah that's why I'm using the pen tool. All right, so we're finished with the first one, and now we're gonna do uh, the second mountain here. 
or the second top here and before I do that I just want to search if I can find some volcano pictures Right, so now that we have two mountains slash rocks um, cut out and I got this volcano picture for the background um, I think it's time for to match up these uh, lighting settings I guess and see uh, how we should position everything so I feel like this could be here a bit more Right, so now I'm just going to try and color grade these a bit better <coughs> uh, to see if we can match them up a bit. Alright, now let's see if we can do some perspective warping to make this look a bit more as if it's tilted to the side. I'm not sure if I can actually pull this off, but... Alright, so now that we have like the background image, I guess. Um, it's time to actually start making sense of all of these colors um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna put a gradient map and put it make it um, for now black and white and see if we can do something with the color alright so now I want to apply a little bit of more highlights to the model so like that the highlights on his arm and his like muscles will be glowing a bit like this and then make him pop out a little bit better like this I guess Let's see yeah uh, maybe a bit more shadow All right um, okay so now that this is finished I'm gonna try and make a grid around here um, I want to leave room for the text here so I'm gonna put like a placeholder text for now so the room here will be left to for the text, I guess. Um, and now we're gonna dive into Illustrator and try to make a bottom like um, thing here to match up with this, I guess. Um, I usually make sure that Snap to Pixel is turned off, Snap to Grid is turned on, and my grid's visible. You can do this by command um, and then the colons. Sorry, command and like. Uh, the quote marks I guess uh, I'm not sure what, they, what they're called in English so yeah I'll try to uh, explain what I'm doing along the way <clears throat> so first I'm gonna try and make a grid here okay the room that I want to use is this um, so I'm trying to make, gonna make this into an outline and then we'll lock it so we can do whatever we want in this space um, and I'm gonna make sure to use um, this size, like the space of one grid uh, square, uh, as my spacing option in most parts, I guess. Um, so, what I want to do is type out the track title. So, I want like a thick extended typing, like this. And uh, let's see if we can find some inspiration on uh, IG real quick. Okay, all right, so I want to have this act as a label. So I'm um, going to do like a little star in between here. Um, so I'm going to grab four circles. <coughs> And one square. 
make sure that you select all of the circles make it into a compound path and then delete them from here <coughs> and we're all also going to shear this one with the same angle as our uh, fonts but if first I want to make sure that the height of it will match to the text so I'm going to turn off my grid for a second alright so now I'm going to shear it <clears throat> we can group this now and let's just put it here for a second So what I'm doing now is I'm going to make sure that my spacing is a bit correct. So I'm going to take um, Okay, so here around the middle of the shared E, I'm going to make sure that the spacing between here is the same as in here. So like this <clears throat> and then I try to okay, push it a bit to here so there's a bit more space in here so now I'm gonna type out like my own artist name in the bootleg And to fill this up a bit, I'm going to grab the Dread Shapes file. Right, so I'm going to grab this shape from the Dread Shapes uh, package. <coughs> going to paste it into here. I'm going to turn off my grid for a second. And I just want to use this middle version, so I'm going to delete the excess shapes in here. Like so. Turn my grid back on again. Okay color it black and make sure that the height matches the text I guess um, and then I want to extend this out a bit like this and since it's quite a thin shape I'm gonna push it up like one block here and one block here um, well maybe like half a block um, so I'm going to go to properties and I can see the height is 60 so I'm going to put I'm going to make sure uniform scaling is turned off and I'm going to put 70 so it will be 5 pixels up and 5 pixels down around the same size as the G and the O in the typeface here and I'm going to do the same in the width direction it can extend just a bit past here because the shape is so thin ok so now we can use this as one block group it align it with our um, with our, our like ellipse uh, rectangle here and there we go okay now I want to do take the bottom here and I want to do some typefaces and a barcode and whatever and I think yeah I might want to push this down a bit like this <coughs> a quick little uh, life hack there's a font called code 128 and you can just type in the barcode so if I type dreadlabs this will be dreadlabs in a barcode version and then I can just create outlines and I have some shapes as a barcode which will save you a lot of time compared to like pushing rectangles everywhere I guess um, I want to get a uh, condensed typing like Roboto condensed and I'm gonna scale this down make it a bit more thin I guess yeah, medium should do. Uh, 
and because this isn't a real barcode anyway I'm gonna scale this up so it will match with our grid make sure that this it's okay so I want to align this properly uh, but since this is already rounding up uh, I just want to take half of this shape and when it align uh, the texture so um, if this wouldn't be um, rounded up I would use the full width but because it's rounding up there's like a little bit less space here so that's why I want to align it like this right so because the text I want to duplicate a text um, but I'm gonna align him to the right here and then I think I'm gonna just <clears throat> make sure that half of the hmm. yeah I'm gonna scale these down just a little or make a make it a bit more thin um, all right so I think I'm gonna use grab the group here I'm gonna put it these here Right, so now I'm gonna make sure that the I and the H are here are properly aligned. And now I can use this. It's a bit it's a bit more in the rounding shape here, I guess. Um and then we leave a little bit more room to do some graphics in here. So I'm gonna just put a line in here, make sure it's the same width as the outline here. I'm gonna shear it into thirty degrees because that's uh what we shear the text and um, the star in like this and don't worry about this part we're gonna fix that later um, for now I just want to fix <coughs> I think this should be down a bit like here I'm gonna scale this down so it's the same height as the text oh like almost Turn off the grid for a second. All right, I'm gonna turn my grid back on. Make sure that the height is matched to uh, to the text in the bottom here. can overscale just a little bit like five pixels let's make sure that that's aligned properly and we can overscale this a bit just because it's round as you can see this won't match up properly uh, here but that's because so this won't properly match up here as you can see like the height here is a bit uh, lower than the round shape but it's uh, like a graphic design rule um, so yeah then I want to take this I guess three circles apart like this <clears throat> and then do the same again here And before I do anything else, I'm gonna make sure that I click on offset path, which is under object path, offset path. I use shortcuts, so when I click command five, it will pop up. Anyway, um, and I'm gonna scale these 10 pixels down. Now I'm gonna grab these outer shapes, go to scripts, and I downloaded this like script, which is called Meta Metaball, and it will create like this a meta ball uh, between the circles um, and now we can use the um, uh, and now we can use the top shape uh, the, the inner circles to cut out uh, anything in between um, but now that I think of it I it might be cooler to uh, grab a dread shape and cut it out of there um, so see if we can find a simple one um, 
let's just go with this one make sure that we align it to our circle here like so and make sure there's another one here and yeah alright I'm gonna make a duplicate here first and cut out this one like so and it might be cool to do like a cutout in both ways in a tribal shape and maybe we can use one of these for that um, so I'm gonna paste it in and delete all of them but one and I'm gonna turn off my grid for a second so we can freely res resize this um, Right, so yeah, I'm gonna cut off everything here. So we need to use this part, and then all right. So now, what I want to do is I want to make one point, and I want to align it in the middle here. And now I want to select my shape here and find my anchor point and rotate it 180 degrees around and make a copy of it. So we have this. Now we can delete that middle path here and cut these like slashes out of here, like so. All right. Um, Let's see what this looks like outlined. I might like that better, so I'm gonna flatten it out. Uh, let's just leave it where it is. Uh, so let's do a quick uh, like globe here. Um, so I'm gonna put, turn my grid back on, take my ellipse tool, and see, okay, three sh circles apart, as well as here make sure that this is the same height as here so I'm gonna copy the height oh, it's 75 okay so I'm gonna align it like so turn off my uniform scaling and put this into oops 75 and then I'm gonna align it again <coughs> all right so what this does is well this doesn't look I'm gonna align it with this shape so there's a bit more space between here um, but eventually I, I think I'll try to do this and put this into uh, yeah I think I'm gonna do it like this and then um, align this back to this original square same goes for this shape and all these group these we're gonna outline them first and then I'm gonna group them all right so the globe um, let's just up the stroke here a bit so it kind of matches with these I guess um, so what I want to do right right now is I'm gonna go, go command C command F and now as you can see uh, I have the same shape in here, um, I guess. Um, Alright, so what I want to do is I'm going to go here and I'm holding Alt while I drag, uh, was dragging this and then I'm going to click Command D to repeat my action. So now we have three ellipses and I want to make sure that the middle one is where this one should be. Okay, I'm going to select all of, the, all of these and then I'm going to go to the shape builder tool and delete these excess shapes like this. Okay, now I'm going to grab the outer ring again, press command C, command F and scale them down again and do the same 
press command F again and scale these down again. And now we have something that looks like a globe. And I still want to do one line to the middle here. But I want the circle to punch this middle line out so there won't be anything in the middle. Or you know what I could do? I could do this. I'm holding my direct selection tool, grab this anchor point so the line will stop here and do the same on the other side. But I'm just gonna drag it here. Um, and then I wanna put DL in there. Or YLX. Let's just do the YLX. Um, oops. Grab the font that we used earlier again. Lower the kerning. So the typefaces touch. Or the letters touch. And then I'm going to go and shear them. Outline them. And align them with our circle circle in here. And scale them down a bit. Alright. And now that I see this, I think yeah, this should be fine. Not too sure about this one though. I think I'm gonna just delete it. Um so yeah, a very important thing about doing graphic design is uh kill your darlings. Um if you get feedback from a lot of people like for example that this uh, doesn't work out in this label um, I try to uh, just try to let go and just delete it if it doesn't matter uh, same goes for if you like don't feel it yourself uh, don't be afraid to just delete it and start over again um, that's the design process and that's basically the way you learn yourself to take criticism by yourself and get better at stuff um, so for now, I'm just going to do something different. If you want to know how I make these kinds of shapes, uh, you should check out my rotational shapes and illustrator tutorial. Uh, it will be up on YouTube by the time this video goes up. Um, for now, I'm just going to match the height with the circle here which is 75 is this aligned properly it is all right make sure my anchor points in the middle here and because I don't feel the way that like the middle ear is uh, doing I think I'm gonna do this a bit different. So what I want to do is grab this, turn off my grid, and align it to the middle of my star in here, which is was it here. Okay. So all right. So now I have a line which is. Uh, about the same height as one point in the star. And I want to make the uh, width of the line a bit pointy. And I'm going to make stroke 5, I guess. Yeah. And I'm going to grab my rotational tool, grab this anchor point, hold other option, and then do 360 divided by 12 and copy. So now we kind of have the same thing. Um, but what I want to do is I want to grab this one and this one and I guess all of them except for the middle ones I just want to scale them so that there's a bit more room in here I guess in the middle all right um, so now it's time to make sure that we outline this. Make sure that we 
extend our stroke and intersect it once we hit the horizontal line like this and now this one I think we're good on this one uh, I'm gonna make sure that only the line stays and I'm gonna make it the same width as our outer line I guess um, and now that I see it like this, uh, because of the width here, I'm going to place all of this down a bit. Just make sure that this is grouped properly. Same goes for this shape. All right. Uh, so now we have room for one more graphic and what I want to do is um, Alright, so what I want to do for this is um, I want to make a grid. Increase the numbers a bit. Uh, I want to increase it a bit more in the height section. So something like this um, and I'm gonna go back into Photoshop grab a new file a bit smaller okay I'm gonna make the background white grab an ellipse make sure the ellipse is black Make a new layer with a soft white brush and make sure that the layer is clipped to our ellipse here. And we're gonna go something like this. And uh, to top this off, I'm going to go grab a noise layer, which I made with um, my uh, Photoshop Actions. If you want to check this out, uh, we have a Photoshop Action tutorial in how to make this noise texture in one click. And then I'm going to put this to overlay, so the fade will be a bit noisy. And then I'm going to go Command, Option, Alt, E. Uh, command option shift E sorry I'm gonna copy this layer bring it in the illustrator turn off my grid for a second and go to image trace make sure that the noise is all the way to one pixel and click on preview hmm Right, so I want to make sure the edge of the circle will still be there. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add a stroke to the circle. And yes, okay. Um, make sure to bring this layer back into Illustrator again. And I'm going to do the same thing. And expand this and then make sure that the background here will be gone all right so I'm gonna hide the grid for a second and then I'm gonna make sure that my Uh, 
uh, that my rectangle here is properly lined up with everything in the in the file here um, so like this and then I'm gonna align the ball here to this grid I'm gonna scale it down a bit like so and get the grid back in here and like the top path in here uh, I wanna group the grid in the circle first and then select the top path with it and then go to object clipping mask make and now we have a clipping mask all right so um i know there's some stuff in here that's still uh, like white for example if i grab this and drag it into the background here um you can see that the circle in here and the ulex bootleg uh, are still white but that doesn't matter i'm gonna hide the uh, guide rectangle that we had up in here and I'm gonna save this So we can close this down and then we're going to go back into our original file. And I'm going to drag this in. And a little tip uh, if you want it to be on the original spot as how you plan this out, uh, we can go in here and drag it in again and then click on crop to media box which will put it in the original uh, description part I guess okay, so now I'm going to double click and I'm going to remove the white in here like this make sure it's transitioning a bit but I want basically all of it gone like so Um, and now I want to turn this into a smart object and now we can go alright so now that we can properly color this I want to make it white again I think um, Let's just pick out a color from the image in here. Something along here, make it a bit bright brighter. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna displace the hell out of this. Um, this um, still not too sure about the color though uh, let's see what happens if we yeah, we can not really blend it in I guess uh, or can we not nah, it's too much um, not really a fan of this to be honest with you let's see if we can do something about it um, let's make this black again and remove the fill on this one like so 
and as you can see this is kind of weird right now so what we're going to do is grab this shape like the clipping mask one um, and make sure that we use this shape and use a copy like command C command F and punch it out of the original clipping mask like so so now we make this into clipping mask it looks like this and now we still need to drag this one in so it doesn't clash like so and now I might want to do the resize this and share it a bit as well mm, this should be fine so now we want to go and click on replace contents and drag it in again make sure it's cropped to media box again and for some reason it's dragged all the way to the bottom but it doesn't matter because we had a 100 pixel increment I guess so which is about here Um, so for the color, I think I'm just gonna go with white and then grab an inner shadow This should be good. Um, so um, now I can see that this circle isn't really properly done. All right, I, I remember what happened. Um, so we need to copy this layer style, clear it a bit for a moment, delete the displacement filter. Uh, so the problem is we didn't do the we didn't eliminate the white circle around there. Um, so go turn this into a smart a smart object. Place the layer style back and displace it again. And now we're gonna go and drag the inner shadow in a bit more. So it's in more places, I guess. Um, all right, so another thing we can do is, um, can grab a rounded rectangle, get around the size of our, uh, our like info bar in here. Make sure that it's, the radius is set to like, uh, what was it, 150, I guess. Doesn't really matter uh, as long as it's inside our uh, info box. Um, so if we size it up a bit. Like this should be fine. All right, now we make the selection, we can hide this and turn uh, this into a smart object, the background and go to filter blur, gauge blur and blur it I guess seven and a half something like that so yeah now we have the fil The image is not, isn't really blurred but except for in the background here so everything's a bit more readable as you can see or seeable, I guess. 
Um, anyway, I'm gonna go and grab my iPad now and we're gonna go and I'll show you the time lapse of my uh, custom Goosebump typeface real quick. Photoshop and I just drew this in Procreate and now we're just gonna uh, make sure that it fits in our uh, album cover so I want to make a grid that's 100 by 100 uh, so it will match with um, like my info bar down here and it's okay to leave the spikes a bit on top of the uh, on top of the actual uh, uh, guides here because and it's okay to leave the spikes a bit on top of the guide here because um, they don't make up for the weight that the actual uh, parts of the letters are so yeah Uh, now I want to apply a puppet warp and see if I can warp the text a bit better uh, because some parts uh, so I did a little bit of warping uh, to make sure that your uh, text uh, looks a bit better in my opinion um, and now I'm just gonna go and see if we can add some cool effects to this um, so what I want to do is I want to start with a gradient overlay and I want to make sure that this is like a almost made like a fiery uh, fade I guess um, right so now I'm gonna group this at a bevel and emboss effect with a ring like so and I'm gonna scale it up in add some depth in it um, so that it's yeah around this should be fine and then I also want to add a bevel and emboss on the bottom layer here but then um, just see what we're doing here turn it off um, like so and now I want to add a outer glow well alright so now we have these 3d text letter stuff uh, thing going on and I want to make a proper blur by converting this to a smart object duplicating it drag it to the back and then blur it with a Gaussian blur let's see what it looks like and um, maybe you could use a little bit of saturation all right um, Uh, okay, so this is uh, fine so far. Um, and now I want to add some textures to this. Um, so uh, a little bit of grunge and a little bit of, uh, I guess, papery. So as you can see, this texture is uh, 
red and what I want to do is I want to make it black and white like this and then add some contrast and then group this name it paper texture and drag it all the way to the bottom make our actual cover a group and in the overlay mode I see that the highlights are kinda too intense so let me see if I can modify that a little bit like this so what I want to do now is I want to grab some grunge textures so this is a texture from black market um, and I just want to make it so that we only have these scratches left and these uh, like paint flecks I guess fleckles speckles I don't know what they're called um, anyway when we put this to lighten you can see scratches and I actually want to replace this um, with another paper texture um, this one <coughs> Alright, so um, let's just resize this properly and then I think we should make it a bit darker. Like so. And then uh, lastly I want to add some more uh, like distress, uh, distress stuff like with a photocopy texture with a little light in as well. Well, let's just put this to normal. Put the group to lighten. And now we can adjust stuff with our curve uh, adjustment layer to decrease the effects just a little bit. Okay. Um, now that I'm looking at this, I just want to have this glow removed, I think, yeah. And to f make this fit uh, the cover a bit better, what I want to do is blend it in with the background a bit. And let's just distress this a little bit and make the edges a bit more natural. see what that looks like yeah okay yeah this looks like it's blended in properly all right so this was the first uh, episode of this series uh, let me know if you dig this series or if you prefer more tutorials or any other type of content because this was a little bit let less tutorially and a bit more uh, me showing my work process and everything um, so yeah let me know if you dig this kind of stuff uh if this inspired you or helped you in any other way um and if you have any suggestion for a video or a cover or anything uh leave them down in the comments below or uh follow us on instagram or join us on discord um and i'll see you guys in the next video bye